All right, so now remember this is just a main function. We have to, we only defined it. And so if we run this program, nothing's going to happen because we haven't called the main function. We have to call it, all right? And so I'm going to call the main function this way. And then now let's save our, our program. I'm going to save it in the same location, so desktop, same location where I saved the text file. This is average of numbers, right? Yes. And so I'm going to save this program as average of numbers dot pi. Save it. And it says average is 2.5. So it seems to be working. Let's change this to uh, no, let's change it to 8, something that sums up to 8. So 2 and 6 sum up to 8. There are two lines, so that's going to give us 4. Let's try one more. Let's add a bunch of numbers. Um, save. And it says average is 11.625. It should be correct because we got the first two correct and our, our code looks good too. Now let's we're done, but then let's go ahead and, um, you know, basically create accept exceptions. I have exception handlers. Um, so assuming that our, our text file doesn't exist, or, or, or it got it got deleted on the file for some reason, the program would crash. And so we need to have a way to handle that, right? So any part of the code that has the potential to to raise an error, we have to let the program be aware of what to do. When the, when that when that uh, that error ha um, happens, and so I know that this line has the potential to throw an error when the file doesn't exist. So I'm going to wrap a try statement around it, and say try to open this file. Try to do this, except in the case. Try to do this. Run the program around, except in the case where you find an I/O error. I happen to know that. The error that can occur as a result of, you know, the program not finding the file, is an I/O error, and so I'm um, I'm going to I'm saying that if there's an I/O error, then display a message saying that file not found. Okay, so when I try this now because the file exists, all right. That you know that th that works. Now let me just go back for a second, just not not to confuse you. Now this is how how the program was. Um, before I before I I started to try. This is how it was. Save it and everything works fine. If uh, if uh, if let's say I change the file name to let's say numbers.txt, this doesn't exist. When it looks in the folder, I won't find this n u n u m e r s.txt. So when I try to run the program, it says no such file or directory. Now this is an error message, right? That's caused basically that's the ex an exception has happened, and that's the error message of, of that exception. All right. So anytime an error like this happens, an exception object is created in memory, right? Now you can pass this exception object. You can give this exception, or you can store this exception object, okay, in a variable. You can you can you can pass it to a variable. And when you print that variable, this message is going to be printed on the screen. Now, this is not a nice way. This is not a nice way to show to the user. You, know, you can't show the user this. This is a crash. The program has crashed. So anytime an error like this happens, an exception object is created in memory. You can pass that exception object to a variable. And when you print that variable, when you pass that variable into the print function, it's going to display this message to the user. And that's a nice, a nice way to actually do that. And so Let's go back to what I did with the try. I'm trying to ru run the statement. Keep running the program, you know, fine. But only when you find an, an I/O error. I happen to know that the name of that error that happens is an I/O error. Except when you except when you find an error, error. print file not found. I run this. It says file not found. Uh, sorry, sorry, file not found. All right, but it continues to run the program below it. I want it to stop if it displays this message file not found. I want it to stop. 
But the thing is, after it it, it did it did the program, it did what I told it to do. All right, it printed file not found, but it went ahead to continue. I wanted to stop here, and so I'm going to create an else statement here. And I'll explain that in a second. You say else. Run this code. What I'm saying is this. Now, when I run it, it says found not found. What I'm saying is this: try to run this line. You can keep on running the program, all right. Except when you find an I/O error, print this message, and that's it. And don't continue this code. But el else, if you don't find any except in any exception, any I/O error, can you know run this code. Run this code only when you don't find an I/O error. Try to try to try to run this line. If you find an I/O error, print this line, print this message, find out found, and stop. Else, if you don't find any I/O error, then continue with the code. So, so basically, th th that's what I'm saying. Now, remember, I, I told you that. Um, I t remember, I said that I happen to know that this exception exception is called I/O error, and I said that any time an, an exception like that is tr um, thrown in memory, um, uh, so b b any time an exception like that happens, an exception object is uh, th is basically created in memory, and you can as assign that exception object to a variable. So the way you do that is going to is by saying Accept IO error as use a keyword as, and that's how you assign that exception object to a variable. Now, that variable can be called anything. I'm going to call it error. Okay, error. Or I'll, I'll just say error generated or something. You can call it anything. So I've, I've passed in that exception object to this variable. Now remember I said that if you print the, uh, the variable, if you pass this variable to the print function, it's going to display that error message we saw here. And so I can do that. I can pass in as, a, as another argument, error generated. And we should see that message here, displayed to the user in a very nice way. Let me put the colon here. And so by default, like I said, when you pass in arguments to the print function this way, they are displayed with a space. So this is going to be found or found space and then the message, the error message that comes with that exception. Run this. Now it says file not found, and this is the exact error message we saw over here. Now that's a nice way, it's a better way to show to the user than to have the program crash. All right. Now remember I said I happen to know this is called an IO error. Imagine, yeah, assuming, you, 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 um, assuming you, you didn't know the type of error that can, you know, basically happen or that can result from this, you know, this program. Assuming you didn't know. That, or you knew that, okay, this line has a potential to cause an error, but you didn't know what type. Now you can just use the, gen the, the generic exception type. Okay, instead of being specific and knowing the ex uh, exact exception that can happen, you can just be, be generic and say, okay, accept the exception that happens, okay, as error generated. You don't know the exception, you know, specifically, but you know it's generally an exception. So you can use the exception type here, the general exception type here, and you can give that. You can you know pass that to a variable. Same thing, right? Same thing. I just happen to know that that was an I/O error. So when I run this, see same thing happens. When I change this back to numbers to txt, that file exists. So when I run this, the average is 11.25. Remove this and it, try to run this. It doesn't know what this file is. It says file not found. No such file or directory numbers to txt. Put the end back, run it, and it seems to work. Okay, so we're done. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take, take care of yourselves, uh, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right, then. Bye-bye.